Good evening. My name is Philomena and I'm a member of St John's Church in Egham. It's a real pleasure to welcome you to tonight's service of Compline or Night Prayer. Now just before we begin, let's get comfortable and be still together as we wait upon the Holy Spirit. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now just before we come to our time of confession together, let's have a think back on the day that's just passed and everything that we've said and done before we join for our confessional prayer. Our confession. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. And our absolution. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen and our Compline hymn. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you, with steadfast love, would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And now we continue this evening in our Compline series. We're looking at the book of Matthew, and tonight's reading is from Matthew chapter 26, and it's verses 1 to 5. It's the plot to kill Jesus. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, Passover begins in two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. At that same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Cephas the high priest, plotting how to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, or the people may riot. Amen. So tonight we're continuing, as I say, in the book of Matthew, and we move on from Jesus teaching his disciples and speaking about the kingdom of heaven to them. And now, instead, he begins to forewarn them about the reality of what will take place in a couple of days' time. He knew it all. He'd agreed to it. He knew what was about to happen. And he knew that at that very same moment that he was speaking with them, there were others who were talking about him. And they weren't talking in a good and positive way, but they were talking through words that were filled with lies with fear and with hatred. And these others were actually priests. They were the priests of the time, the leaders of their community, the elders, people that others looked up to. And they were actually meant to be good and holy people, people with a deep prayerful connection to God. Yet their actions and their words were completely opposite of this. They were plotting a brutal murder and they were scheming about the best way to carry it out without causing a scene in public. They knew that the feast of the Passover was about to take place, 
And so during this annual event, where thousands of pilgrims came to their city to worship and commemorate together, they didn't want their plans disrupted by these people and they didn't want the worshippers to oppose what they were doing and react with violence and riots. These verses are very upsetting to read and in some ways we wonder if the crucifixion of Jesus was a big mistake. Why didn't God stop the conversations that these priests were having? Why didn't he stop the evil that was about to take place? Why couldn't he have done something else to redeem his people and take away sin? Why? Because he loves us. Because God is a God of love. He loves each and every one of us and he was willing to give his own life for our sake as he knew that this was the only way. Jesus had to endure hatred rejection, abandonment and death in order to fulfil God's plan and he knowingly offered himself as a sacrifice as the Passover lamb in order for his followers to be completely redeemed and restored. He chose to sit down with his disciples, with his best friends and explain to them about his own upcoming death trying to help them understand what was about to take place because he knew that his death wouldn't be the end. It was only the beginning because three days later he would rise again. What an amazing teacher. What an amazing God that we follow. He speaks the truth before it even happens and he always keeps his word. We may not understand why suffering and evil take place, but we do know that we follow a God who loves us more than he loves himself and who's triumphed over suffering, evil, sin and death. All of the evil plotting and scheming in the world will never stop him and the plans that he has for his people and for his world as we're reminded in John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, Jesus says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. We are his people and we are truly blessed. Praise Jesus. Amen. we now come to our expressions of faith. Lord, you have always given us bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials. And now tried as I am, today I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, You have always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today, I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe. And though you may be silent now, today, I believe. And now the song of Simeon. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you've prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father 
and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We now come to our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave your life for each and every one of us, and for our children, and for their children, for the generations to come. We're humbled by the love and the sacrifice that you made, and we worship and we thank you for your continual love and faithfulness for each of us. Amen. Dear Lord, please forgive us for the times when we forget all that you've done, and instead we choose to control our own lives with our own plans and schemes looking to make things happen the way that we feel is best, but without involving you. May we remember that you have overcome the world, and when we come before you and offer ourselves, our lives and all on our hearts, you fill us with your peace. In a moment of silence, we ask for your peace to come upon us now as we bring to you our personal prayers. We now continue together with the words that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our conclusion. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. I'm placing my soul and my body in thy safe keeping this night, O God. In thy safe keeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safe keeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. God bless you and may you have a peaceful night's sleep. <laughs>